Every month, a lot of bad mobile games come out, but a few good ones slip through. GameRank spends a little time every month putting together a list of those games, and here it is. The 10 best free iOS and Android games of September 2016. Number 10, PewDiePie's Tuber Simulator, which is not that dissimilar from the various manga and anime artist simulators. It's not exactly the same thing, but if you've played one of those, you know what you're getting. That being said, it's probably a little bit more applicable to Western sensibilities, and a lot of people are going to say, well, yes, I relate to this a little bit more than most people in the United States are gonna be like, I wish to be a manga manga artist. Yeah, there's not quite the same opportunities available for that here. However, we do have a cultural equivalent in the YouTuber, which is obviously a different art form, but still. PewDiePie, whether you love or hate him, has made a very successful career, and this brings that kind of simulator gameplay to that type of creative endeavor. It's interesting, it definitely feels exactly like you'd expect it to feel. Uh, the wait times can be really awful sometimes, and those of us who aren't necessarily huge fans of PewDiePie will have to kind of deal with the language of the PewDiePie fan, which is spoken throughout all of the tutorial stuff, as well as a lot of the menus. But otherwise, for the most part, if you enjoy this type of game, I think you're probably going to enjoy this one. Number nine, Enyo, which sounds like a hilarious offshoot 90s artist. Not true. It's a tactical roguelike that plays out essentially in a turn-based manner that gives you the option of hooks and shields, essentially grab and throw. You can't defeat enemies in this game by simply attacking them repeatedly. You have to push them into burning lava pits or spiked walls. It's actually really, really fun. As far as a mobile roguelike, this is essentially like everything I could pretty much ask for because I feel like the stakes are high enough that I'm interested in it, like repeatedly interested in it. But it also does a good job of making it compartmentalized enough that it doesn't feel like a very long experience that you have to continue to come back to in order to complete. You get satisfaction from it at appropriate intervals, and it's really, like, it's a super fun game. I don't have really anything to complain about. Number eight is Gunship Battle Second War, which is a helicopter slash flight combat simulator that takes place a little bit after the Second World War and sort of explores the aftermath of it. Now the aftermath is a little bit more violent in this game than it is in real life, and sometimes there are some minorly unrealistic things about this game, but I'm not sure that it's really purporting itself as a simulator either. It's got some great graphics, a lot of customization, and you can play it in either third or first person with some tilt controls that are a little bit awkward at first, but then turn out to be actually pretty intuitive and predictable, and I, I like it. Number seven is One More Jump, which is actually a pretty innovative, kind of endless runner kind of platformer. And obviously those two types of games are very, very close, but this brings it even closer, sort of blurring the line. It's essentially taken an anti-gravity approach. These levels are much more non-linear than one might expect from a one-touch style platformer, though. And make no mistake, this one is a challenging game as well. This is a tough, tough game. But at the same time, it feels worth it. I don't know how this game hasn't been made. This is one of those games where you're like, why didn't somebody do this already? But those are often the toughest ideas out there, and really, this is a top-notch platformer slash one-touch jumper. Number six is Oz Broken Kingdom, which functions as kind of a hybrid of a few different genres, including turn-based, Final Fantasy-style combat with more linear experience, and obviously the Oz storyline. It's embellished a little bit to be a little bit more oriented towards combat, obviously, and it's certainly a lot darker than I remember any Oz anything, and that includes Return to Oz. But I do like that it does actually have a specific narrative, which if you'd look at the screenshots and trailer, you wouldn't necessarily be 100% sure of. It's a fun game, and it does have a nice PvP mode with some great evolution on your characters. Number five is Ver to go racing which has a terrible icon but ignore that the game itself is incredibly fun it's a hilltop racing game which is basically a way of saying levels with weird obstacles and is honestly somewhere between sonic dash and a racing game it's quite creative and they've done everything they can to make it look kind of like a 50s photo and in including classic cars as what you're playing as but also just the general colors of the game come off that way 
Now again, to bring up the colors, they're not necessarily everybody's cup of tea. I've seen more than a few people not particularly happy with it, but then again, there are people that really hate Instagram filters, and I myself don't understand hatred of things that don't really matter. It's nice to see a game with a fairly wide color palette that fits into a theme. The game plays very fast, and it's easy to kind of lose track of what's going on, not because it's not helpful with visual cues, but because it's a fast game and it requires your full attention. And the sensation of speed actually is kind of what drew me into it. It's about as immersive as an arcade mobile racing game is going to get. It's really, like, lots of fun. I really enjoyed this one. Number four is Orbit, a game that allows you to play with gravity. It plays out as a puzzle game, which now essentially asks you to launch planets and get an orbit that's stable around a black hole or more than one black hole. It's a very, very simple concept that plays out in a very nuanced and minimalistically pretty way. Now it's important to note that the game's levels are free, but there is also a sandbox mode that you can purchase. It's kind of a completely different thing though, so I'm not really counting it as a pay feature, so to speak. It's kind of a second game in and of itself because there aren't really any goals in it. Number three, Antiquia Lost is an RPG from Chemco that shows quite a bit of growth on their part, not just in the fact that the English itself is better, but the story is actually a little bit more understandable. They went out of their way to make it a little bit more coherent and maybe, dare I say it, a little more modern. I mean structurally, not actually the atmosphere of it, but structurally. The battles are pretty standard, they're enjoyable, turn-based, fantasy, RPG, JRPG style combat, and the promo materials get kind of weirdly hung up on the fact that there's a slime girl in the game. Don't let that be weird to you because it actually creates a cool mechanic where that character can sort of incorporate items and things like that into their skills by eating them. I know it sounds odd, but it actually works out pretty well. And it does, I feel, represent a growth of both ideas and execution from Kemco. Number two is Hackers, which is somewhere between a network simulator and an RTS in which you take on various perspectives such as security, activist, or terrorist, and take part in a global cyber war. It refers to it as the first world cyber war, which is bizarre and weird and will kind of scratch the Clash of Clans style game itch with a completely different approach. And finally, number one, Animation Throwdown TQFC, which is a card game featuring a lot of your favorite characters from various different Fox animation programs, or at least most of them. There's characters from the Family Guy universe, which includes American Dad, the Bob's Burgers universe, the Futurama universe, and even King of the Hill. It's a free-to-play game, but there are some extra things that can be bought with real money. That's how everything is now. You know old Falcon hates that, but I'm not going to let it get in the way of enjoying something that's good, because the quest for perfect is often an obstacle in the quest for good. An animation throwdown the quest for cards is more than just good, it's actually a great card game. And it features a lot of my favorite characters from various cartoons. How can you go wrong with that? I will say though, Cartoon Network, where are you on this? Fox might have you beat a little bit. Might, um, you know, want to make a showing, you know? Adventure Time, regular show, Rick and Morty, you know, that stuff. Just saying I wouldn't mind a similar game for that universe as well. What was your favorite free iOS and Android game this month? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. The best way to see them first is, as always, a description. We thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.